Hey everybody, welcome to the True Crime Squad. I'm Christy Brower, here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. I mean, well, ish. We ish. Had the most annoying, uh, you know, trip to court today, but... Uh, we did, yeah. I'm yeah. still annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed, but other than that, I I'm know. fine. I am too. But we did learn some things, and I think we can extrapolate upon some things that were not said so we're going to talk about so. that yeah. here in a few minutes mm -hmm. but let's get things kicked right off you've got you've got a crime news update for us i do okay you may remember last fall or last summer maybe that we reported on jennifer hall Jennifer Hall is a respiratory therapist that had been charged with murder yes. and also been called a potential serial killer. Yes. So she has been charged with another murder. Oh boy. So I'm going to share, I want to share her picture. That might jog some of your memories. But she was a new respiratory therapist and she went to work at a facility at a hospital. This is Jennifer right here. Mm hmm interesting that uh her hoodie says don't effing care bear yeah yeah that's wow. kind of what people think there uh jennifer mm -hmm. so let me tell you a little bit about her it'll probably uh spike you guys's memory but she was a new respiratory therapist and she was working at a facility a new facility uh and this has been a long time ago this has been more than 20 years ago this was in the early 2000s Right. That she worked in this place. And the time that she was there, their uh, rate of people fully crashing in respiratory arrest spiked outrageously. Yeah. And this was at the Hendrick Medical Center in 2001 and 2002. So staff had said that the rate of cardiac collapse incidences rose alarmingly. These incidences were viewed as medically suspicious. She only worked there for five months. And in that five months, there were 18 incidents and nine of them resulted in death. Good Lord. And that's why uh, she's uh, suspected to actually be a serial killer. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, she has denied that... Uh, loudly and, and wildly she's just barely started to catch charges from this and, and why is that we good question know. she was charged with the first one in may 2022 mm -hmm. the death of fern franco fern was 75 uh now she's been charged that was a second degree charge mm -hmm. this time she's been charged with a first degree charge wow this is a, Fern was 75. This was a 37-year-old patient named David Harper. Oh, 37? And according to charging documents, she was in charge of him uh, when he died. And she told nursing staff when she entered his room, she found him seated on the edge of the bed. She said that he told her he felt ill before falling backwards on the bed in complete respiratory arrest and later mm. died. Uh, according to charging documents at the time of his death, she was found with a vial of, I'm going to try and say it right, succinylene mm. or succinylene. Hmm. This is wrong. Uh, <laughs> succinylene. Hmm. maybe somebody's going to correct me. I know just do, please do. Cause I know that's probably not right. Um, she was not certified to administer that drug, Like Ooh. she shouldn't have had it on her at all. Uh -huh. And it was the substance that was used to take Mr. Harper's life. It paralyzes the victim's muscles, including the diaphragm so that you, uh, suffocate because your body is paralyzed and can't breathe, you can't breathe fully conscious and aware. 
Holy hell. That's horrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's just been charged. So now she's facing one second degree murder charge in Fern's death and now Fern Franco's death and now this first degree murder charge. So I think it's interesting because she has been called the, uh, uh, you know, the serial killer respiratory therapist for right. 20 years now without any charges. And now in the scope of, uh, you know, less than a year, she's got two. Will there be more? I'm going to assume yes. Uh, it sounds to me so, like they have a lot of evidence. And that's why I'm very confused as to why it's taken 20 years to bring charges. Right. If she was found to have that drug in her pocket and that's what he died of and she wasn't even certified to be in possession of that, why is it taking 20 years? Why, why has it taken 20 years? That's strange. We're going to have to keep an eye on this. See if we can figure that out because mm -hmm. that makes no sense at all. For sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of things that make no sense at all, I'm going to kick the mic back over to you and we'll talk about court. Uh, let's do it. So we attended a hearing today that was a very um, rapidly scheduled with short notice hearing. It was mm -hmm. for the Day Bell Vallow um, murder case today. It was scheduled on Friday. For yeah, today. Friday for today at 2.30, which that is, doesn't usually happen. There's usually some more notice. And, yeah. you know, Katie, you had speculated and you were correct that this had to do with some DNA and forensic yeah. evidence that they received the like the prosecutor's office received the report at the end of the hearing last Thursday. Yeah. Now we did shoot for the stars uh, in our episode yesterday and, and just hope that maybe this was actually a plea deal. It wasn't. No, it was not. Not that we How, would have known. No, not that we would have known. So the, the judge explains like, this is why we're here. First of all, the defendants were not in court. And while we were waiting for the hearing to start, I overheard a bailiff talking to someone else who said, "We, I don't, I don't know why they're not here. We could have had them here, but the judge said no. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know why mm -hmm. um, the defendants were not present. Um, I have a thought on that. I have a thought on that. You, John Pryor I also not present, but I think probably that was a notice issue because he lives five hours away. Well, that would be why Chad wouldn't be present as well, because well, Chad wouldn't true. be present in the courtroom without his attorney. Right. And there was probably no way for Pryor to make it here that quickly. But uh, Lori could have been, and her attorneys, Lori I, you know, have been. Well, I, you hear a lot as you're just sitting in the courtroom, and mm -hmm. her attorneys said that they had visited her prior to the hearing, and yeah. they didn't know why she wasn't in the courtroom, but they did say mm -hmm. that she was aware that the judge had made that decision. So, mm -hmm. And maybe it was that that's because Chad wasn't there. That's my know. guess is that because Chad couldn't be there because his attorney probably couldn't be there. He, they were just, weren't going to have any of them there, but yeah, that, that's just a guess. It also seems a lot like the judge was pretty sure this wasn't going to be kind of a nothing uh, hearing as well, um, yeah. which it turned out to be. Well, at least the public part. So <laughs> I was going to say, oh, I think things were decided. <laughs> it's just not where we got to see. And then things got started. Yeah. The judge explained, we, we've got some more evidence. This is DNA and also some other forensic evidence. And he said that I do not fully understand and I will need you. And he's like gesturing at the prosecutor mm -hmm. to explain to me what this is. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much what we got. And then they said, well, this, they all agreed, basically, that um, this was going to be a sealed portion of the hearing. Mm -hmm. Prior kind of objected, but his our objection made no sense at all. So It was just the, he, he's never going to just be okay with it the same way as the prosecutor. <laughs> he's always got to have something else to say. Always. Mm -hmm. So they kick us all out. All of us, you know, anybody that's in the courtroom that isn't mm -hmm. attorneys has to leave. Mm -hmm. So we all go out. All of the police officers and detectives that were there to witness. Everybody. To watch. The, yeah. The judge said that this um, was very sensitive um, information that may or may not be used in court, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. And he said that it would risk um, tainting the jury pool. So that's mm -hmm. why they kicked us all out. So we all go out and we sit in the hall and we've all been sitting there about a minute. And then one of the bailiffs comes out and says, um, actually they want you to go one le level down. And so go downstairs to, 
to the main floor mm-hmm. of the uh, courthouse to sit. Like we were too close, I guess, mm-hmm. which was ridiculous. There was no, you weren't going to hear anything. Unless right, what were we going to do? Put our ear to the door with the cop? I, I mean, like, what is that Harry Potter ear thing called? Maybe the extendable else? ears. Yeah. Yeah. So they sent us all downstairs and everyone was like, okay. <laughs> This is weird. So we sit down there for a solid 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then they come get us and say, okay, we're ready. You can come back. So we get upstairs. Everybody gets seated. We're waiting. And then somebody comes in and says to the attorneys, the judge needs to see you all again. And they all leave the room. Mm-hmm. We're like, what the hell's going on? So they're only gone from the room like two minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, and bear and then- in mind, uh, Pryor's not with them because he's on Skype. Right. But he could have been on Skype in that room with them. Yeah. Um, And then they come out and one of the bailiffs tells us, yeah, sorry, you guys all have to leave again. And as we're walking out, I say, downstairs? And the bailiff goes, yeah, downstairs. (laughs) Like, what the hell is going on? Right. So we go downstairs. We sit there for about 15 minutes. They come get us. They bring everybody up. We all go up. We sit down. The judge comes in and he says, well, just as we were going to, you know, complete this hearing, we received another report of some more evidence. And so we are going this by this time, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And he says, we're going to have to um, postpone this um, until our next hearing possible hearing date, which will be Thursday morning of this week. Mm -hmm. That's all that happened. Yeah. But let's read between the lines here. So these yeah. reports that have come from the lab in California, because the mm-hmm. IPO lab said, we did what we can do. We didn't find any DNA. Mm-hmm. But we found more hairs. But yeah. we they can't actually get found from more them. evidence. But yeah, no yeah. DNA. They can't get anything. Mm-hmm. And, and the Idaho lab tried to tell the judge that they couldn't do this. And the judge would not listen to them. And, you know, we're sure that was financially motivated. Mm-hmm. This was clear so back now, in... August? Yeah, it was a long yeah. time ago. So now they're paying, um, I cannot even imagine what the bill is going to be with this lab in California. Mm-hmm. And they're getting all of this evidence back. And you know what? What they're getting back is actual forensic evidence. Mm-hmm. Because if this was just, we got it back and they just done low DNA, this would not have all been so super secret like it was mm-hmm. today. Obviously, there is some actionable evidence. Uh-huh. So that tells us that they've got something new, evidentiary wise, that they did uh-huh. not have before. And yeah. does that mean it's Chad's DNA? Does it mean it's Lori's DNA? Does it mean it's Alex's DNA? Does it mean it's someone else's <laughs> DNA entirely? Wouldn't that it throw a wrench in stuff? We flip everyone upside down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, Clearly, they've got some more evidence. This is interesting because, of course, this is all being framed by Pryor has asked again to have the trial severed because he's concerned with this evidence. Uh Lori's camp couldn't care less. Uh They filed nothing about it. Um, Completely nonplussed by the evidence. Yeah. Not bothered at all. Yeah. Even today. Uh So we don't know. Does that mean it's Chad's DNA? Maybe. We don't know. Um, but also the other thing that prior asked for was if you're not going to sever the cases, then we need to postpone the trial. We've got to push it back because my experts cannot review this DNA and the amount of time we have, blah, blah, blah. You know, this uh-huh. battle has been going on for a while. So that is, I guess, going to be further discussed on uh-huh. Thursday in this hearing. And we'll see, because basically the judge said, I can't really rule on the those price. requests by Mr. Pryor until I know what's going on with this evidence. Mm-hmm. And then it's just rolling in, rolls in during the hearing last week, rolls in during this hearing. I'm like, maybe you guys could ask the lab, like, how many reports are there going to be? And can you give us an estimation of when the last one's going to show up so that I don't right. know, they can stop doing this? Right. Is there more? Was right. this it? Is this it? Or are there going to be more reports? Like, we don't know. hmm but, but it, it was it very, is pretty fascinating. Yeah, it is. And it was taken extremely seriously mm-hmm. to the level that we couldn't even 
sit on the same floor as the courtroom where they were talking about right. it. Right. Like, how bombastic is this? Right. We because were all like, what? This is big stuff. I mean, the they bailiff would... acted as dumbfounded as we did. He was he like, did. yeah, that's what they're saying. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was odd, but it does lend to the possibility that there is, in fact, some pretty significant evidence coming through in these reports. Yeah. And if that is the case, do they need to postpone this trial so that everyone has an opportunity to review it? Is it information that is going to lead to willingness to plead? You know, is this the kind of bombshell evidence that a defense attorney goes, yeah, they have you dead to rights now because of the DNA. Uh, you might want to consider taking a plea. Right. We don't know. Well, I'm hoping on Lori's part, I'm really hoping that is exactly mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Does um, this exonerate anybody, which would be really weird too. Not that only that, not that this evidence would fully exonerate anyone because it wouldn't, mm -hmm. but it could be used pretty mm -hmm. significantly um, by the defense. If in fact, it isn't either one of them. It's also interesting because wouldn't that be something? I mean, seriously, right? but yeah, I know that makes me go thinking about all the different, and I'm not going to say their names because that seems a little uh, too much, but uh, <laughs> of, all <the> other, <laughs> of all the other players here. Yeah. This is duct uh, tape that was used to wrap JJ's body. This is right. in relation to JJ specifically that we do know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, how many, how many, much forensics could they possibly have gotten off Tylee? Probably none. No, not the way you that know. her body was destroyed. However, yeah. they did have some um, tools that they believe had been used to uh, damage Tylee's body right. uh, to, to dismember her from Chad's shed that uh, there was talk that they had been able to uh, get some evidence off of or some DNA off of. So there is some stuff there, but uh, JJ's body is different, very different though, because it was intact. And so, yeah. And wrapped in uh, garbage bags and duct tape. Well, you said this last night. We don't want to toot our own horns, but we have said all along where the forensic evidence is going to be is on that damn duct tape. On that duct tape. When have you ever used duct tape that you didn't leave some of your own DNA on it? Ever. Right. Your skin, your hair. It's mm -hmm. about impossible to use without getting mm -hmm. something stuck to it. And we are not talking about criminal geniuses here. We are no. talking about some really arrogant SOBs who thought they were going to get away with it. He really didn't try to cover this crime at all, other than lying about where the kids were. Mm -hmm. The actual, they didn't really use a lot of forensic countermeasures. Well, I guess maybe destroying Tylee's body was maybe a forensic countermeasure. I don't know. I still, I'm very curious to learn why they did that versus what they did with JJ. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm guessing that they thought they were going to do that with both bodies, but it didn't work out very well with Tylee's uh, because That's burning true. a human body is way harder than it may, you may think. Right. Uh, you the, can't as, do it in as a campfire. As far as uh, what we've learned, can... yeah, from this case and others where they where there's been an attempt at burning someone, uh, my take on that is probably that that was always the intention, but when it didn't really work very well with Tylee, they decided that they probably better do something else with JJ. And that could be. My thought, but... That could definitely be. But so it was very strange. The whole thing was very strange. Um, mm -hmm. The hearing started out like it was very relaxed today. Oh, boy. And, and I think not having, and you said this, not having the defendants there was part of that. The mm -hmm. people were much more relaxed. There was a lot of more of sort of chit chatty stuff going on prior to the mm -hmm. hearing. They all kind of rolled in late. Like Lindsay mm -hmm. Blake had her lunch and a drink with her at the, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the table. And mm -hmm. like nobody, people were pretty relaxed in this they situation. Were. Oh, the until the judge started attorney, talking. Yeah. The defense attorneys were visiting with the reporters with the media. And, and, and cops and just, yeah, wandering mm -hmm. around. I have to say, John Thomas walked past us and gave us the biggest smile and I almost died. How did I not see this before? John Thomas looks like a Muppet. He does. Yeah. He looks just like a Muppet. He has kind of a Muppety face. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cute smile. But a, yeah, adorable very. Adorable smile. He gave us, he flashed us the cutest smile and I died because dude looks like a Muppet. It was yeah, cute. He does. Anyway. <laughs> he does. It is true. I will so, say one thing about going to court that I find interesting mm -hmm. is how friendly the defense attorneys are. They are. They're very friendly. They always talk to people. They smile at you, you know, mm -hmm. like. 
And it wasn't weird leering like um, John Pryor is. Pryor will smile like, at you and tell you, just want him to stop. Yeah, because he just, like, <laughs> makes eye contact. He's It's like he's making eye contact with each person and smiling at you. And you're like, why are you, what? Why are you doing that? It's so weird. Um, it's like, I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> you know, you are. So weird. Yeah, I know. Creepy, creepy, creepy. I, 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 I would guess that's how he is in person. He's awkward. He does not know how to connect with people. That's my he, take on him. He but is his smiling awkward, yeah. in the courtroom is very strange. But um, but yeah, the other guy is just super friendly, but very different vibe. Yeah, not nearly as uptight, not nearly as tense. Well, it wasn't as high security either. Oh no. Uh-uh. There, no. We didn't all have to stand in line with our number. We just walked in. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to go through a metal detector. But I'm assuming. That's because the defendants weren't in the room. And they're, yeah. you know, I mean, when they when they load Chad up to take him literally from the courthouse to the jail, which is next door. Next to the has, parking lot. He has a bulletproof vest on when mm-hmm. they do that. Sure. Um, it's their job to keep him safe so that right. they can be held accountable. Yeah. Or, well, at least. Uh, I mean, Lori doesn't wear one usually. Sometimes. She I does. See, she, I've she seen does. It, but does she mm-hmm. always? Oh. Mm-hmm. Well. We never see it in the courtroom. Worried. But uh, yeah, yeah, from transport, she does. Yeah. Well, and I think that is smart considering our community is very angry at these people. Yeah. But it was frustrating today because it did feel like another one of those not really sharing with the public what's going on kind of deals. It's hard as the public to not feel like uh, our constitutional rights and the defendant's constitutional rights have not been violated in this case in the way way too many things have been sealed yeah it, it's every attorney that looks at this case shakes their head and goes what the hell is this judge doing you know right. it's hard to imagine and when it they is. go well we're just going to keep protecting that jury pool that's not really it, no not I, everybody I, does that to this yeah level, for no sure. No, they don't. But again, you know, we're dealing with small town Idaho that doesn't yeah. know, doesn't have a lot of experience here. But at I the do. same time, we sure want to see these fools be held accountable. And we, we do. don't want we do. yeah. a mistrial or anything stupid to happen. So it's, it's both sides of the coin. But boy, to be sitting in that courtroom today and mm-hmm. get kicked out twice and then have that hearing just immediately ended. Yeah. Hard to not be fairly frustrated. Yeah. We drove up there in a blizzard. We Everyone hung out for two hours. Was frustrated. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just us. Everybody that was there. You know, we all drove up in a blizzard. We sit there for two hours with no information, really. I mean, there is just, mm-hmm. you can't avoid picking up some information. This is clearly some pretty significant evidence that's coming their way because of the way that they treated this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. we'll be back on Thursday morning and hopefully we won't just keep getting kicked out again. Unless they seal it. I mean, okay. And Judge maybe Boyce, will... let me speak to you directly for just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he watches our channel for sure. Honey, if you're just going to seal the whole damn thing anyway, will you just do it now? Right. Just let so everybody the, know. The press and, and all of us don't have to hightail our butts up there in the snow and the cold and yeah. sit in that courtroom for absolutely no it reason. It was blizzarding when we drove up there. Maybe it'd be cool if we didn't have to do that if, unless we need to. just seal it anyway. Just do it now, please. Because right. if you're not, I'm going to assume that we're going to at least receive some kind of knowledge on this case. Well, I, cause he, I think he's got to he's got to look at severing and he's got to look at postponement. Based well, on time this is now. evidence, like I think he's got to look at that. And that is where I think we may actually see a hearing where there's at least an argument that happens with the defense attorneys and the prosecutors yeah. around what now, what do we do? Well, sure. And I mean, you consider this is I mean, court is on what May or March 2nd. And this trial is supposed to start April 3rd. A- right? Yeah. I mean, we're only a month away. Some decisions have to be made right have to be made immediately so that's why i think there probably will be a hearing on thursday because they're going to have to argue all this now mm-hmm. and this may change the way that voice is looking at severing and postponing mm-hmm. easily could. because if this yeah. is actual actionable evidence then that makes prior's arguments more valid certainly it does however 
However, um, because I want to see the law followed, and if Pryor needs more time and he can't do this at this point, I, I don't think it's fair. I mean, I, I think on one hand, you go, my God, he's had two and a half years, but he hasn't with this evidence. Not with this he's evidence. He's not wrong. I wouldn't have. But. All that other stuff from last week. Yeah, that was all bullshit. Okay. But this oh. is not this bullshit. Is this is real. Uh, he's, he's been waiting for this moment all his life. This yep. is real. However, let me ask you this. Mm. With all the new evidence rolling out, do you think this changes at all? Lori's camp's position that they want to go to trial right now, or do you think that they will also say, yeah, we think we should wait? What's your opinion? I, I Maybe. I mean, if this, if this evidence is in relation to Lori at all, if any of that forensic evidence points to her, we've kind of thought all along this evidence points to Chad and Alex, right? Mm -hmm. But what if her DNA was there? Yeah. That could change things, yes. Yeah. I yeah. still think that could I still think that her her team strategy is settle. I agreed. You know. To plea. Yeah. Agreed. To plea. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I also wonder, knowing how bad Pryor wants to sever and wants uh to have his day in the sun uh in a year, he'll never get that. But he won't get that. He might get three months. He might get I, three I can't months. imagine October. I think October is like the latest he's going to get but let's say that he gets that do you think it's possible that this is kind of the strategy of Lori's camp all along maybe to oh, dig their heels in and insist that they have to have their trial now she did not waive a speedy trial either give her her trial or let her go that's the only choice you have because they know full well that will get them a separation and it may it very well could be, you know, you don't know. I'm curious about their strategy because they they're not much more strategic about the evidence. Yes. Yeah. They're much more strategic. Prior mm -hmm. just sort of screams a lot. Um, He's more of a bull in a china closet, you know, elbowing mm -hmm. his way through. There's certainly Lori's more camp is, yeah, they are very laid back, quiet. They're, mm -hmm. They don't freak you know, out about anything. They're mm -hmm. very like, whatever. It's all good. We got this kind of attitude. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I think whatever this evidence shows could mm -hmm. change things quite significantly. Agree. Depending on who it implicates. Mm -hmm. And this so. is also, we think the evidence that the Idaho State Lab said that they didn't know that they could get any, that there they may not be any DNA on. Right. Yes, and, it is. And uh, it seems like, uh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I just, you know, the whole thing's pretty fascinating. It is. I, if they'd only listened to the State Lab last fall or last summer mm -hmm. and said, okay, we're going to hire us a private lab now so that we're not down to the friggin' wire like we are, but we wouldn't be here. Yep. No. And now they're paying this lab so much more mm -hmm. because it's such a rush. Yeah. Uh, kind of a deal. It's, it's way more expensive than it would have been if they did it last summer. I, I will say this a thousand times over. The FBI should have done the forensics. I don't understand why they didn't. I know. I don't either. And, and maybe there's I just don't know. Maybe there's a reason else, why. I guess. But I don't know. If the FBI had done the forensics, this would have been done a thousand years ago. Yeah. And there wouldn't would have, have been any questions, yeah. in my opinion. Well, I mean, we have one lab in this in this state. Yeah, that's very backed up. And it's very backed up and it's very limited. Mm -hmm. Not very big. <clears throat> you would absolutely die to know what the backlog of uh, rape kits is in Idaho. It's absolutely horrific. Mm -hmm. But that's because we just don't have the resources. Yeah. No, it's not. It's because we don't oh. make the resources. Right. We don't well, allocate, because we don't allocate the, resources. the resources. Yeah. Um, Idaho runs on a surplus every mm -hmm. year. Every and year. it's so big right now, they're trying to figure out what to do. They've already sent us checks a couple of times mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to figure out what to do with the money. Oh, I don't know. Maybe put it into the lab. <laughs> Maybe expand Jesus. the crime lab and set a goal to have all rape kits in this state, all of the backlogs processed in the next 12 months. Yeah. I don't know. And, and, and even the ones. A couple that, more labs. <laughs> yeah. Two more labs in other parts of the state. And then make a law about crime or rape kits, mm -hmm. about how long they're allowed to sit on a shelf before they get processed. Yeah, they're not going to do that. And that law should be six months or less. Or I don't less. Do that. They don't They'll give never a shit. do that. 
no, no. other states. No, no. Idaho is okay, trying to ban drag shows right now because, you know, that's what our biggest concern is, right? They're very busy working on discriminating against gay people. They don't really well, have time to worry about sexual that's assault. Pretty much what our legislature does is they try to figure out ways to pass laws that discriminate against Idahoans. Mm -hmm. And then they'll stand up and get shot down by the Supreme Court. And then we go around and around, and that's where mm -hmm. we spend a lot of our money. Yep. But that's part of why we're here. Yeah. Is because this was not the priority it should have been. Mm -hmm. I think that's unfortunate. It is. It's very unfortunate. No. Oh. Well, we will go to court on Thursday mm -hmm. and we will live Facebook it again and we will come on with a live stream after the fact and tell you what happened. Uh, fingers crossed something actually happens this time. Uh, I really do think it will I because th I think they have to address those concerns mm -hmm. in relation to this evidence. Yeah. So with that, Katie, I know that you have a little WTF news for us. I do. All right. I think everybody knows what this is. Yes, the Wienermobile. I wish I was an Oscar Mayer Wiener. Right? Everybody's seen the Wienermobile, hopefully, at least once in your life. Cool. Yeah. It's so, a has... really important moment in my life. <laughs> I think you'll actually be able to relate to this story quite well. Oh, uh oh. Mm hmm. Last spring, you had your vamper in storage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you guys went to pick it up, and it would not start. And my husband headed over to take a look at it and see why it wouldn't start. And why wouldn't it start? Because some fools had broken into the lot where you were storing it and stolen your catalytic converter. Yep, cut it right out, cut the transmission line. So we shot all our transmission fluid out over on the ground and couldn't drive the van. Yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. it was and as we know, catalytic converter thefts have been happening all over the country yeah. for the last few years. Uh, they are extremely valuable. And this has been a big problem, right? Yeah. Well, these mofros, man, they hit the Wienermobile. What? And stole the catalytic converter right off of it in Las Vegas. Well, it had to be Las Vegas. It, it did have to be Las Vegas. That that tracks 100 percent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So somebody actually had the nerve to crawl under the Wienermobile and steal their catalytic converter. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> now, luckily, rude as hell. They were on a tour, of course, as they always are. Right. And a mechanic was able to make a temporary emergency repair to the seal where the converter had been cut out so that the Wienermobile could continue on its way until they could get uh, a catalytic converter ordered and get it actually uh, put into it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, what jackass yeah. is? <laughs> is there no bottom? Really? Right. Is nothing sacred? The Wienermobile isn't even sacred enough? Come on. Oh, I hope. I hope those dicks get caught. <laughs> Me too. And, and uh, prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Yes, yes, the extent. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're welcome. This is our Tuesday episode. Yeah. Um, I think we will not have a Wednesday episode. Uh, because we'll be in court on Thursday. We'll have another yeah. episode, but we will be back on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain for our case updates live stream. For sure. Yeah. Be, be prepared for some pretty hilarious shit coming out of the Murdoch case. <laughs> if you know, you know. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tell yes. Tell me about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus lots of other stuff. Tons of other stuff going on, of course. Oh, so, you know it. We appreciate you all so very much. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to leave us a tip for, you know, driving in the blizzard. Uh, you can go to <laughs> truecrime, true crime, true crime squad com. You can buy us a coffee there, or we do have a way to do uh, <laughs> PayPal 
sell tips as well. I'm, I'm cracking myself up too much. Uh, but we do appreciate all of you this is so still much. still about Murdoch, isn't it? I can it tell. It is. I can't yeah. get over it. Yeah. You, you guys, mm -hmm. you're going to love this story if you haven't mm -hmm. heard it already. And even if you have, you're still going to laugh. Mm -hmm. So you know it. We are the True Crime Squad. Thanks for being here. Take care. Thank <music> you.